Let's look at the book of Judges. Well, before that, let me give you a key. I open, I don't know, I didn't, did I open this Bible? I don't know, I just saw something. I want to read something also, but come and see. Read now. The Lord appears to Solomon. First Kings chapter 9, read. First Kings 9. When Solomon had finished building the temple of the Lord and the royal palace and had achieved all he had desired to do, the Lord appeared to him a second time as he had appeared to him at Gibeon. The Lord said to him, I have heard the prayer and plea you have made before me. I have consecrated this temple which you have built by putting my name there forever. My eyes and my heart will always be there. As for you, if you walk before me faithfully with integrity of heart and uprightness, as David your father did, and do all I command and observe my decrees and laws, I will establish your royal throne over Israel forever, as I promised David your father when I said, you shall never fail to have a successor on the throne of Israel. Now listen, verse 6, go on. But if you or your descendants turn away from me, and do not observe the commands and decrees that I have given you, and go off to save other gods and worship them. Then I will cut off Israel from the land I have given them, and will reject this temple. Reject what? This temple. I have consecrated this temple I have consecrated for my name. Israel will then become a byword and an object of ridicule among all people. This temple will become a heap of rubble. All who pass by will all appeal and will, will be appalled. Will be appalled and will scoff and say, "Why has the Lord done such a thing to this land and to this temple?" People will answer, "Because they have forsaken the Lord their God, who brought their ancestors out of Egypt and have embraced other gods, worshiping and serving them." That is why the Lord brought all this disaster on them. Thank you. Coincidence. Oh, so let's pack here briefly again. Did you see the Lord just as I already explained? Oh, wonderful temple. I built it. Solomon now prays. Fire fell for those who don't know. Fire fell from heaven on the sacrifice. Fire fell like Elijah. It fell. Before Elijah, there was Solomon. Mm. It fell when the tabernacle of Moses was dedicated to. The fire fell. Few times the fire falls. God showed up and he gave himself glory. And it was so amazing. And the Lord spoke to Solomon. Another time, he had asked for wisdom the first time. He asked this time, please, if anybody does this and they pray towards this temple here, if this happens, we pray towards this temple here. And God said, I've heard you. He appears to him, and after he does that, the Lord answers him and says, if you will do, I will keep my promise to your ancestor, David. However, you see this temple, this fantastic edifice you built here? It will become a heap of stones, rubble, trash, if you fail to obey me. Question, did that temple become a heap of stones? Yes, sir. So why would it become in spite of God's confirmation of his goodness? Answer. What were the conditions for disaster? Forsaking the Lord first. Listen, verse 6. If you turn away from following me, read. Read. And do not keep the commandments and statutes I have kept before you. Did you see him say, if you stop praying? What did he say? You stop obeying 
my word. And I ask you the same question I asked at the beginning. How can you obey what you don't even know? This is why the devil does not like people who study the Bible. And even if they seem to study, he likes those that seem to study to speak big English. He's not interested in any of that. He's interested in your hearing it, understanding it, and obeying it. It is the doing of the word that gives you good standing with God. If you will keep his commandments and statutes that he sets before you. Look at me. Not the commandments and statutes you or your teachers set before you. You can create Matthew 15 quickly. Matthew, the 15th chapter, reading from the first verse. Then some Pharisees and scribes came to Jesus from Jerusalem and asked, Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? They do not wash their hands before they eat. Jesus replied, And why do you break the command of God for the sake of your tradition? So there's the tradition of the elders, the practice, ministerial ethics, yes, Take note, it's not the practice of everyone, it's of the elders, the leaders. They are the things that those who had gone before had said, in the church, this is how you operate. This is a tradition. It was like, it, it, and then it, it, it became as though thus saith the Lord. Jesus didn't say, well, it's okay, I'll speak to them. No! He said, why do you break the command of God? You said my people break the command. My disciples break the commands of the elders. But you, you break the command, not tradition, commands of God. You see people so engaged in appearances and practice and how it's done. When they are clearly disregarding basic commandments like thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. That's a command. Focus on obeying that. And you're here busy talking about, um, you know, as a man of God, as children of God, there's a way you receive a minister. Now, it's good to be polite and cautious and receive a minister. There's a way you deliver a word. God can never send a smaller person to bring a word, prophetic word to a bigger person. Is that, is that a command? Is that in the Bible? So how come you're teaching it to schools of ministry as though it's anywhere in the Bible? Oh, if, 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 if the Lord wishes to bring a rebuke, or if the Lord wishes to bring a correction, he's going to speak it through a father. Uh, yeah. Passage. I'm asking someone here that grew up knowing. Who knew? Who used to know that God can never rebuke? You knew. Just I didn't know the passage, but you knew. Or okay, who heard that God cannot speak to someone except that the oil flows from up? Oh, Jesus. Uh, who knew? Who used to know it? You used to know it before I came here. You used to know all these things. Raise your hand. The rest of you were pagans. Your family has always been given to idols. We church you now they go. Were all of you Lutheran? Was nobody here Pentecostal? You slept throughout. When you went for church, you just slept. Well done, you. Now, well done. Please, I want the passage for it, please. Is it the one I just quoted? Oil falls from above. Passage. What happened to Melchizedek? Did what? What has that to do with rebuking? Did Abraham try to rebuke Melchizedek? I'm confused. When? Is it after they eat? I haven't heard that one. What? Give me a passage. Who knows the passage for God cannot send a rebuke through? I need a passage. Why is it so popular a statement? That God can never send a word of correction. And he can't send it through who? Is it younger in age or younger in size of congregation? Mm -hmm. 
So you see, you take a tradition like that. Nonsense tradition. Why is it nonsense? The Bible says, did you put a passage here without telling me? 1 Timothy 5, verse 1. I already answered you. I didn't even know. Do not rebuke an older man, but appeal to him as a father. An older man. Let's define older. Yes? What is an older man? Should I pass the mic? What is an older man? Older in what age? Biological age. Okay, even though you got born again two months ago. Good. I'm not saying I don't agree. I actually agree with you. I believe that's what he was saying. Excuse me, uh, Mr. Abogidi. Um, I, I need to see. Me. Can we see after the church meeting in my office? Um, I noticed that. Well, um, you know, your two children. I know they they wait and come with you for meetings. And they are they are part of our social and so department, and uh, because they have to come with you, I, I was speaking with them and asking them why can't you leave and come? I mean, you are you, one is nineteen, the other one. Uh, now I can approach this in two ways, Mister Bogidi. You can't be coming late anyhow and making people late. Don't let the devil use you. Uh, we can, we're not taking this church. Uh, don't do it again. Don't do it again. We're going to be a member of this church. This is what the Bible says don't do. What you do is, I, 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 I want to request, um, can, uh, Arnold and Ronald be coming ahead? They, 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 made, they delayed us for some things and we've had some real challenges. You no, know, because you know, he handles this and, and the other one handles this. Please, I'd like to request uh, if it's possible to you that you tell them to leave. Let them leave early. And leave early. You, you don't have to like let him know that they say it's your fault. You know, you can, are you seeing you're appealing? Now, someone is going to think it's talking about sin, but eh, I don't think so. Why? Because the next verse is talking about younger men as brothers. Verse 2 is talking about treating older women as mothers. He's talking to younger women and sisters. Do you see anything there about sin? Anything there? So if he's talking about older men, older women, young men, young women. Can you see anything there about sin? Does it sound? This looks like Titus chapter 2. It's not about sin. It's about if you're talking to him. Now, if it's a younger man, you can sometimes, I could tell someone that is younger than me. You can't be coming. If I'm talking to Ronald, say you can't be coming late. You, you just, I'm going to take that your position and give someone else. Can I say that without any fear? Of, but to this older man for his action. Now, if he's with the key to the building, there won't even be any discussion. I say, please, can we have our key? <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> First time he might say, ah, sir, you kept us outside. That's appealing. As a father, how can you talk to your father? It's with, it's not, no, 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 not take that nonsense. You can't say that to your father. Do you understand? It doesn't mean you can't say, daddy, this is not correct. No, daddy, I, I can never support that. You can say that to a father. You can say, no, she's of age. You can't impose a husband on her. Can't impose a husband on her. She's the one that will live with the man. Uh, Daddy, me, I will not vote, I'll vote against that too. And let's have a family meeting. Or I'll, I'll, I'll not sponsor that. I will not give my money towards any such thing. Mm? We, this family, we are following Jesus. I can never support. That's not, that's not disrespect. That's your stating. That's different from rebuking an older man who, now if you go on to read all the way down to verse 17, you read down to verse 20. Something down. You go and see more when he's talking about elders in the church that are accused of sinning. And he said, no, you don't go and say, I hear you're doing hanky-punk in this church with, with girls. If it's a leader in the church, he says, it has to be two or three witnesses. 
So if one girl came and spoke to you, say it's like that man has doesn't have a clean mind. You don't go out talking to him. The Bible says what, there has to be at least two witnesses, two people that came and said, hmm, I was sitting the other day, uh, you know, and this man called me and he, so, so, and so that's verse 19, you know. So, so there's the circumstances. It's a bit different from, you, you can say, please, sir, um, you know, and this is where he's not even guilty. Please, sir, um, you know, the people of this, these days, They've heard and seen so many things. Many of them, they are lecturers. So if you if you want to talk with them and you, uh, you know, you don't be touchy feely. It said you, and I'm not, I'm not talking about a church elder now. So it says if there's if, if there's a an accusation against a church leader elder, typically older people, watch how you handle. It. But look at what it says. Like verse 19, do not entertain an accusation against an elder except on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Verse 20, but those who persist in sin should be rebuked in front of everyone so that the others who stand in fear of sin. There are two ways to read this. The typical way is read, read is, oh, take that older man and rebuke him in front of everybody. I've shown you, have I shown you that that's not what you meant? I showed you from the book of Leviticus where this instruction was gotten from. And it was talking about people that were accusing the elder, they kept accusing the elder. He was saying you should rebuke. Come here. What do you say, elder? Somebody did. Listen, I've told you people in this church, you can't. Well, who's, who told you? It didn't happen to you. No. Where did I heard? I heard from. And then you, you heard from. And it's so so and so that told me. Did you confirm it? No, no. So who and who have you told? Well, I told, I shared it in a, a choir group. So without knowing who is the person that told you, call him. So if they've warned and said, don't do this thing, the Bible says, if they keep doing it, rebuke them. That is the person who remembers when I shared this about two, three years ago. But you've forgotten it. It's hard in your mind. You see, most of you have gone back to your default interpretation in spite of my excessive evidence even at that time Deuteronomy chapter 15 chapter 19 verse 15 to 21 I have to if I don't prove it someone is going to say Kai this man this preacher has not bent scripture he wants to cover up a lone witness is not sufficient to establish any wrongdoing or sin against the, in this matter, who is, is it against? Elder or something. This is not an older man. I've left the older man. This is an elder. He's a, a pastor in a church, something. All right. So she came and brought her accusation. The Bible says she alone is not enough. Regardless of what offense he may have committed. Did you hear that? Why do you look unhappy with me as though I wrote the Bible now? Don't be Deuteronomy, now they read. Let me write them. Do you hear that it doesn't matter what he has committed, that it is not enough to say she alone. Take note, this is not a situation where he agrees. Oh, he may have been asked and he says it's a lie. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, someone is misunderstanding me. And people often do this with the Bible. If he's accused, And he says, it's a lie. Such a thing never happened. It never happened. It didn't even cross what on earth? That is a situation where there's a case. This is completely different from him being told. And he says, well, actually, then this passage is not for us. It's not on that discussion. I hope you know the only reason for a witness is when someone says they are not guilty. There's never any need for an additional witness when the person is a witness against themselves already. When they say, well, it's true. So this protocol is in cases where there's denial. Take note, this is the word of God. When we finish, we are going back to Matthew 15. Jesus was talking about how the word of God can be rendered 
useless. It is when people have a practice. The counter to people doing their own practice is finding out what God commands us to practice. That's what I'm doing with you. A matter must be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. I saw, you saw, you saw. We all saw. Mount, I saw it on Friday. That same Friday, me, I saw it. Mount, I had seen it the Wednesday, the week before. I was standing in the classroom window. I saw down into, you know, his office sister. I saw with my own eyes. I went into shock like this. That's three witnesses. How would they know and even bring their witness? It's because the matter has been raised, some one way or the other. If a false witness testifies against someone accusing him of a crime, any of. So if someone is a, so let's say he's that first person and is a false witness. Both parties to the dispute, who are the both parties? The witness and the accused must stand in the presence of the Lord. Help me be ready. Must stand in the presence of the Lord. In the presence of the Lord. How many of you know God didn't come down from heaven? You think when they had cases, God came down from heaven and stood there? How did they stand in the presence of the Lord? Before the priests and judges who are in office at that time. So they come to the pastor, they come to the leader. These are, this, this is basic Christ, godly wisdom, often not practiced. Why there are so many problems in the body of Christ? Often ignored. But God told us what to do. Ah, uh, yes, go on. The judges shall investigate thoroughly. The judges will investigate. Can you see their job? Their job is not to say, oh God, why now? Or oh, young lady, how dare you? Do you know he's a man of God? How dare you speak against a man of God, even if he was guilty? No. No, the command is that it should be investigated and not lightly, thoroughly. How do you investigate something? You ask questions. You check it out. Where were you on this Wednesday, on so and so day? So who else? So who was it that came to your office? Okay. So no problem. We call. Okay, fine. Come. Go and call. It's not a light thing. It's to be checked out. Not a matter of I said, you see. And this one say, are you doubting me? Are you doubting me? In fact, you carry your back. Da, come here. You're guilty. Come back here. Why are you carrying your back to? Wait, stand here. Where, where are you going? Someone accuse you falsely. You're stand there. And if the witness is proven to be a liar, who so, was? The girl. It turns out after they've investigated how? Thoroughly. And she falsely accused. What next? You must do to him as he intended. We are to going do to do to, to the brother. accuser what he intended to what do. he intended to do to his brother, brother so that we may purge the evil from among us. This is what it means when he says, rebuke them publicly. What would we have done to the other one if he was guilty? We would have rebuked him publicly. I want us to know that this person is not a safe individual. Stay away from him. He has been spoken to by one. How many of you know when the first person he did to spoke to him, that was one. Tell him he's sin alone. How many of you know after that when one or two spoke to him that you have met the condition of take one or two people and go and confront him and he didn't still agree? How many of you know now it has to come to the public. It has, now it has been brought to the whole church to address. And people are saying, excuse me. Well, I think he's guilty because he happened with me too. Uh, there was that time. I'm sorry I didn't say it. Another one says, excuse me. Me too. Ah. Elder Bogidi. Ah. This is too bad. And the Bible says, rebuke him publicly. Are, are you seeing this? This is what, you don't go saying, well, because he's an elder, we are not going to, you know, our culture says, no culture here, sir. You're guilty. And nobody's older than God. And God says you're guilty. But those who persist in sin. Now, this was the question. No, go back, go back, go back to verse. This thing. So there's a rebuke in front of everyone. N next verse. Then the rest of the people will hear and be afraid. And they will never again do anything so evil among you. Question, which evil? 
Is it the false accusation or was it that the person that was accused was guilty? According to what we read, there was a false accusation. Now that you know where this law came from, run back now to Timothy, 1 Timothy 5. And then it tells you there. But those who persist in sin should be rebuked in front of everyone. You rebuked the one who brought a false accusation. And others are to stand in fear and not accuse people without first investigating or knowing or following the protocol of bringing it to those who are to investigate it. Because it's not even you that is to investigate thoroughly. Is this clear? Do you believe me now that that passage was talking to the accuser more than to the accused? See how hard it was before he believed me. Mm. So he said, now there are those who still didn't understand. It's okay. Thank God for YouTube. Thank God for Telegram. You're going to go and sit down, play it five more times with a pen. Draw the people. Draw them. You stick people. It's okay. To, that's how to understand scripture. That's how I study Bible too. I check things out. You, you don't just jump up. No, if they just say, I don't understand, I just leave it. You're a lazy bag of bones. Don't be lazy. You have to understand it. Why? What if you are a leader tomorrow? What if you're in a place and they are saying, what should we do? How will you tell them what to do when you don't know the word of God? Remember, you ask according to his, his will and it takes effort to know his will. Now, go to the next verse. Don't stop in Deuteronomy. Jump down to verse, the next verse you didn't put to show you how serious he was. He wanted others to be afraid of accusing people falsely. And then he said, you must show no pity. Life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, and foot for foot. Listen, that thing he want was that would have been done to the person they accused falsely. Example, they would have put the person in front of everyone and rebuked the person. They would have, some, excommunicated the person. They would have, what else? Whatever they would have done to the person. He said, do it to the person who brought a false accusation. You don't keep quiet. So many people do this. They sweep it under the carpet. You find out that it was a lie. And you joke with it. It's not a joke. No, you come out. You wanted them to hold someone responsible for what he or she is not responsible for. You came up with such wickedness. He said, rebuke them publicly so they'll stop sinning. So they'll stop bringing false accusations. They have to stop bringing false accusations. False accusations are a very evil practice. You don't bring false accusations against anybody. You tell the truth. The devil accuses Christians a lot because of this. In fact, many people have serious problems because of false accusations. You don't know what's happening to you. I just showed you. What is happening to you is the exact thing that you intended to happen to someone else. Uh, I think I may start wrapping up on this before we pray and break bread. When you say concerning someone that they are guilty of something and they are not guilty of it, you become a candidate for what happens to people that are guilty of that thing you said. Who did not see it? You need me to show you again. Verse 20, Deuteronomy 19, 19. You must do to him as he intended to do his brother. I have to demonstrate, sorry. Come. This is what is done when someone steals. They cut off his hand. Why accuse this man? You did. Stand here. She accused him to the court. That he stole. According to the law. It's not so in the Bible. They will cut off his hand. There's consequence. That's the consequence of what he has done. She said he did it to the court. The court. Comprised of the priest and the rest. Those, the leadership. You don't catch what I say. Eh. Uh -huh. Come here. Bring your hand here. Ikata. Never. If it's only her that said it, it's true. I saw it. 
the Bible says, never do you carry out action against that man. But if, when the matter is being investigated, so I want to ask you a question. You know, Anyekan, when he was living with you, how long did he stay with you? Two years. Did things ever get missing? Was there incidents of loss, theft, and so on? Please take note what you're about to say is serious. Don't answer casually. You know our law against stealing. Uh -huh. So, yes, I want you to give your witness. And it's not a private thing. Say to the panel, yes or no? No, he never did. Okay. All right. Sorry, who was he staying with before he met you? Oh, okay. I came concerned. How long did he live with you? How long did he stay with you? Eight months. Was there ever an incident of loss? How, were there other people living in your house? Okay, was there ever a loss? Yes, there was a loss. No, don't add anything. No, I'm, I'm good. About how many people were staying with you? I'm explaining what it means to thoroughly investigate. About five other people, like, okay. Was it ever proven, clear? Did he admit, did he, that he stole this, that, that? The two times he stole, he confessed. But it's the only two times things got missing? No. Others, so there are others in the place that used to steal. In fact, from what I remember here in the other matter, there was one of them that was a, a almost like armed robber. They shot him. <laughs> okay, good. So, and you, did you ever suspect that that one influenced him at that time? Oh, yeah, okay. Before, before he came, it's about five months after he stayed with you that was the first incident. So you believe it's, and before that, things were getting lost. Oh, okay. All right. So, so there was never, there was a situation where he was guilty, but he confessed it. Is it because you beat him or something? His, his conscience, he just, and he avoided the other thieves. All right, good. Now, how many of you know this investigation could last one month, two months? I'm explaining how God thinks. Many do not know. Everything, you're hasty. Everything is a rush. If it's going to happen, it's happening now. No, you didn't get that from God. A thorough investigation could last for all I care. They may have to wait for someone that traveled to come back. And they didn't have flight. No, no, someone may have traveled on a trip, a trading trip, and comes back in six months. And during that time, you have to wait. They cannot decide on this matter yet. I'm trying to explain why sometimes people even look at issues in churches and say, why, why was it not addressed at once? Who told you how long it takes to thoroughly investigate anything? Give me the scripture. You will not find. It is why you are quick to hear but slow to speak. So you hear, so it, and this is the wisdom of God. Again, I've learned this through experience. Some things you think, oh, it's so, so, and so, but you take it slowly, gently. You're asking the Lord, giving it time, asking God to clarify. And with time, he clarifies and the thing is resolved. Maybe you're in a haste. No, no, no. The, the panel is meeting. They are meeting. They're, tomorrow is Saturday now. They are meeting tomorrow. If you can't finish by tomorrow, Sunday after the service. The panel, I've told them to address it. I want the result on my table. You are about to do injustice. If human courts, they go to court sometimes for years before deciding, why do you push? Why are you in a haste? Do you want matters of your life to be decided in a haste? You don't, especially if it might not end up well for you. But after all the necessary investigation is done, if it turns out, that we have a second witness who says, yes, he stayed with me concerning this matter. He spoke to me about it. And he never lies to me. We've been friends for 18 years. And he said, I told him in, in confidence. I told him I won't tell anyone. I asked him, did you do it? He said, it's not him. He said, it's not possible. That has he not opened up in his life? That it is never him that did it. 
say this witness has, these two people have rather given you evidence. In the process of looking for the truth, you have found evidence that he's an honest person, even though there was a time in his life he may have been weak. Yes? So we come back to Madam and say, you said this man did this thing. Wait, let's pray first. Father, anybody that is lying here, let thunder fire him. <laughs> okay. Okay, we are, we are Christian priests. <clears throat> Father, you are the judge of all things and you see all things. You know the hearts of all men. You know the one that tells, we ask for your power to be present here, to convict every sinner. Lord, your word says, that's where you pray hot prayer. Whether it's in private or in public. And she finally says, <laughs> what's that? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. He promised me marriage. He now said he's not doing it. Oh. So you formulated a lie against him. Okay. Bye-bye, sir. Your hand, please. <laughs> Stretch it out. Executioner. Bah! That's how she walks around town. With missing fingers. I just showed you the Bible. This is one of the greatest injustices in the world right now. It's why there will be violence in the streets. Um, I, what I just said, I mean it. Because the earth is crime for injustice. Do you know how many people have been... Do you know the courts of this world? If someone does not now sue for libel or slander, and they treat it lightly, they never... There's no justice system on earth that I'm aware of that does to the person what would have been done. Only the God of justice, only the Bible says, do to them what would have been done to. You wanted his hand cut off. Your hand will be cut off. With the same, let me show you, it's the word of God. It's not my feeling. Jesus came and repeated it. With the same measure you measured, let it be measured to you. That's Matthew 7. It's not a feeling. They will remove this person's hand from here. Because that's what they would have done. She knew that's what they would do to him. She intended it to be done to him. So it's done to you. If she thought, if they would have flogged him six, they would flog her six. If they would make, all they would have done is make him pay back. You have to return 50,000 to she will be, from that day, responsible for paying back 50000 Whatever. That's what it means by what? Eye for eye. Tooth for tooth. People have read that all their life and said, yes, so before God used to be wicked, now he's kind. No. No. This is justice. Jesus came to teach favor. He came to say, even if he's guilty, forgive him. And many people think on judgment day, this is what will happen. No, on judgment day will be justice. On judgment day, they will remove your hand. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> oh, the shock people will have when they stand in front of God. Like, eh? I thought they say you're a kind God. I am. Then, what? I, don't, I heard that everything everybody did, you're just telling them to pay back. Yes. Why? I thought when we say we are sorry, it's over. No, my word said that now is the day of salvation. That was then. Now is the acceptable year. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But my word also said that when the door closes, you will come and stand and be knocking. And I will say, Luke 9. Do you know what he said? You say it's in the Bible now. I don't know. Who knows what he said? Who can remind us what he said? They'll stand at the door and be knocking. Bag, bo, bo, bo. And they'll answer.
Uh, did I miss a passage? I think I did. He said, I want to read it exactly as it is. And he said, I, I, I don't know you. Thirteen. Verse 24 to 28. Make every effort to enter through the narrow door. For many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able. Why? Because of time difference. After the master of the house gets up and shuts the door, you will stand outside knocking and say, Lord, open the door for us. But he will reply, I do not know where you are from. Then you will say, listen to what people will say. Ah, this God, they say he's very kind. Man. Uh, we ate and drank with you. It's me, Mr. <laughs> and you taught in our streets. You know, he used to hold crusade. My veranda was next to me. And he will answer. This is Jesus. I tell you, I do not know where you are from. Depart from me, all you evildoers. Uh, because you were an evildoer. Now, right now, Jesus is welcoming all evildoers. Come. But the day is coming. He will close the door. Matthew 25. Go and read it. They call, you, call, you know the story. The ten virgins. The same door that was opened, he will close it. That's the door of grace. It will close. It's called the day of judgment. The day of judgment is, is the day of truth. For those who don't know the passage for this, is John chapter 1. And the Lord Jesus was spoken of. And it was said of him. The law came through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus. So what's the law? The law is, this is the word of God. We just shared some of it today. The law, I just gave you an example. Eye for eye, tooth for tooth. That's the law. What's grace? Grace is favor. Jesus came. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Sorry, hold on, please. Sorry, Father, please. Now the Father sent him. It's not like he interrupted the Father. He said, run ahead and show them mercy. And it comes, uh, everyone, now listen. You know, according to the law, all of you have sinned, fallen short of God's glory. You deserve to be put to death for the wages, payment for sin is death. But the father has made provision in his, he so loved you guys that he gave me his only unique son. If you will believe on me, you will not perish. You have a union life. Uh, that's why I came. All right, so how many of you believe in me? You make your choice right now. You're going to come to me. I'm going to forgive you. Um, I'll wash away your past sins. I um, So what should we do? Oh, you're going to acknowledge that I am the Savior. I, I, so what's going to happen is uh, my blood is going to, you know, when something that is blood comes out, I'm going to take my blood, sprinkle on top of you. And when my father sends the, the wages of sin, when he comes, when he sees the blood, it will pass over you. Um, it's, a, it's a legal uh, thing we came up with. So, so, with the shedding of blood, there will be a remission of your sin. It's according to his law. You know, an innocent lamb, me, sinless. Forgiveness available for anyone who comes through me. You dial in code, G J E S U Jesus, forgiver. You will receive the forgiveness as though you're the one that died. You will be justified, not sanctified, justified, as though you have not sinned. All right, so. If you can believe this, call on me. You will be saved. Now, some people have believed. They call them believers. Then most will not believe. They say, that thing doesn't even make sense. You mean all the bad things I've done, they'll be forgiven. Well, he said it would be. Ah. Ah. Abraham believed God and was counted as righteousness. If you will. Hmm. This thing is hard, though. What is hard to come and for get forgiveness? I said, come to me. Aren't you laboring on that sin and the weight of, I will give you rest. Come, how you will know it's real is that you notice a change in your life after you come to me. I will give you rest. My yoke is easy, burden is like, come. Now, if you're here, you're not born again. I'm talking to you guys, actually. You better get born again. You have no excuses when you see Jesus. None. 
the full weight of the law will come on you. Because he made it so easy. I ask, and it shall be given. My righteousness will rest on you. He gives you that. That's stage one. So most people stop at that level. The law came through Moses. Favor came through Jesus. But it's not just favor that came through Jesus. Favor and truth. What is truth? That is where the trouble begins. People think only favor came through Jesus and it's, it has no end. No. The favor has an end. Door is closed. Doors will be closed. Matthew 7. We read. We didn't read verse 21, 22. We read it last week. He said in that day, many will say, Lord, Lord. And I'll say, I don't know you. Not the one we read. We read Luke. What? 13. Matthew 7 said in verse 22. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons, perform many miracles? And he's going to answer them the same thing he told the people in the other passage. I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Depart from me. Why? You are a worker of lawlessness. Uh -uh. I thought grace came and canceled law. I've been telling you, I've told you people, false doctrine has filled this earth. Grace does not cancel law. It's the same God that gave the law. God is the lawgiver. I've heard rumors of people saying Moses was the lawgiver. The Bible says there is one lawgiver, James 5. How can it be Moses? It's God that is the lawgiver. Isaiah says, the Lord is, the Lord is your lawgiver. The Lord is your king. The Lord is your judge. He will come and save us. He says it's the Lord that is those three things. The judiciary, the legislature, the executive. He is all. Isaiah 33, 22. For the Lord is our judge, the Lord is our lawgiver, the Lord is our king. He will save us. So how can you say it's Moses when the Bible says it's the Lord that is the lawgiver? James 4, 12. There's one lawgiver who is able to save and to... Oh, come on. Talk back. There's one lawgiver and judge. The one who is able to save, save and destroy. destroy. Have you read it? So can you understand when I say the lawgiver who brought the law also sent the savior. But behind savior is destroyer. It's a matter of timing. This is the order, the sequence of God's dealings with man. Always this is God. It's not confusing if you have eyes to see and don't believe in a lie. No, once God shows you favor. No, the God who sent Savior will send destroyer. Just read the book of Revelation. If you won't read any other part. It, it, this is God. He hasn't changed. He will never change. So he sent favor ahead. To turn sinners. Romans 2 verse 2. Don't you know that the kindness of God is pulling you to repentance? Don't you know your continued sin? Next verse. Don't you know you're continuing to despise? Next verse. Next verse. Verse 4. Do you disregard the riches of his kindness, tolerance, and patience? That's grace. Not realizing that God's kindness leads you to repentance. Verse 5. So his kindness, this favor is to lead you to repentance. Look at verse 5. Read. But because, but because of, of your heart and unrepentant heart, you are storing up wrath against yourself for the day of wrath when God's righteous judgment will be revealed. All right, so what should a true preacher do? What I'm doing right now? I tell you the truth. Oh, God is kind. He wants to forgive everybody right now. Believe me. Every day for the next, I don't know how long. But the day is come, he's going to say, all right, shut that door. All of you that refuse my mercy, come, give account. Oh, yeah? Bring your hand. Boom. You don't come saying, I heard you are merciful. I, I am. Then now, uncle, I'm showing the rest of my creation mercy by removing you. Why? Because you're a hard unrepentant, you destroy heaven. So I have to destroy you. You shift. You don't despise or disregard God's kindness. It is folly to do so. I'll pay your school fee this year. I'll pay your school fees this year. Did you just waste the school fees I paid for you? I heard you don't attend classes. Hmm. Stop it. Oh. This next year, let's try again. I'll pay your school fees. 
This seven times I've paid your school fees, you have not gone to school. Go and sit down. Ten years later, I'm ready now. To do what? To tap wine. Go and find a, a, a tree and climb it. Just go away. I'm not saying if you're here that Jesus won't forgive your sins. I'm just saying that God has a right when he says, I've closed the door. That door has closed. No more scholarship for you. Do you think the owner of a thing has a right to do what he likes with his life? I want us to pray. And then we'll break bread. Please, can you stand to your feet? Two prayer points. We put the bread in everybody's hands. Um, after that. First prayer point. We'll pray two prayer points at the same time. You're here. God's kindness has been shown to you. Plenty of kindness. You know it. But you have not responded. You've chosen to continue the other way. And God is saying, no. I, I, I love you. Come to me. Just make a choice that is right. And stay at my feet. I'll take care of you. Today is a good chance to allow the Jesus, our mediator, to speak for you. I've given you, I've advised you on how to talk to the king. And some of you, did, what you need to tell the king is, Father, forgive me and make me your child. I'm going to ask you, and you have to, if you're coming out, you're coming out in a hurry. And we just have like one minute to pray, so it's going to be very fast. And you're saying, I, I have turned my back, I've despised God's kindness. I have not made a choice for God. And, uh, you know, rush out here. Let's pray together. The rest of you in your seats, you're praying another prayer. You're saying, God, help me welcome the work of the Holy Spirit as the teacher. As the teacher that of the things on how to present my matters to the Lord. Deliver me from self-knowledge and help me walk in the wisdom that the Holy Spirit, whom you sent to teach me to present my matters, as revealed in the Bible, help me see and understand. The people that are supposed to come out, I, I don't know what you're waiting for. Come out if you need to restore your relationship with Jesus. Come out here. You're not praying in your seats. The rest of you, if you're praying, pray about this and say, Lord, help me learn the work of the Holy Spirit. The work of the Holy Spirit. The work of the Holy Spirit. Lord, help me learn the work of the Holy Spirit. Ask God to allow us to help you know the educational help of the Spirit in how to stand before Him. In how to stand before Him. Oh Lord, help. Oh Lord, help. Oh Lord help. Oh Lord help. Alabakaya rabasata. Lord help us. You know that voice that says deny Jesus when you're supposed to repent. He won't help you on the day of judgment. That says, I'm, I was too ashamed of what? Of Jesus. Okay. Right? Now, if you're online, wherever you are, go ahead and talk to the Lord. Where you are and say, and tell him that you agree that you are a sinner and that you need mercy. And ask him to forgive you. And accept you to forgive and accept you and wash away all your sin and make you his child right where you are. 
Don't brush it away. Don't say, I have to go to a church meeting to do it. Do it right where you are in your room. Say, Jesus is Lord. I receive his work. I embrace the forgiveness that he brings. Receive that. But you have to ask him. He hears you where you are. He's the same God in all countries. Thank you, Jesus. Mercy there and grace. Thank you, almighty Father. Amen. Now we are prayer, prayer. If you lift your hands, I'll pray. Prayer. Father God, we are asking in appreciation of the things we learned tonight. In addition to that, I'm asking right now, right now, good Father. Allah, bara, 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 bara. that we will receive the ministry of the Holy Spirit in teaching us how to ask according to your will. Say with me, Father, forgive me for ignoring the counsel of the Holy Spirit contained in the Bible and choosing ignorance so many times. Help me be a student. Of what, of what you have said to fight the battles, fight the battles of, what to say. of what to say. Everything the devil, Everything the devil has, succeeded has succeeded in against me due to my ignorance. To my ignorance. Let, it Let it end. Let me be able, me be able to, make to make a good case. Father, I'm asking for a release of a spirit of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Amen. Let there be a release of grace to, to live life as a disciple, studying, seeking, learning, searching, asking constantly. This is our prayer. Let there be cleansing of minds here. I rebuke the stronghold of self-righteousness that chooses to pray rather than listen. Amen. Let that stronghold come down. Amen. Let there be a shattering of a spirit, a false spirit, that a tradition that renders what God says worthless and holds up what people say. Say with me, Lord, I renounce, Lord, I renounce my, holding onto my holding on to what people have said. What people have said. Above what you have clearly said. Forgive me. For esteeming men. Above you. For despising you. In any way. From today. May you have your place. All the time. All my life. In the name of Jesus I pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Have your seats. Have your seats. Have your seats. I like bread and wine to be put into hands in the different halls. And hear me. Settle down quietly and quickly and listen. I'd like us to, while that goes around, understand. You now, one prayer I'll pray when this happens, and that's uh, for healing. Why is the matter of forgiveness, or sorry, false accusation, so dangerous. First Corinthians chapter 11. I'd like you to open, uh, put that on the screen, on the screen. Don't try to open your books when you're holding bread and wine. Don't pour it, whatever you did. Verse 27. Look at verse 27 to verse 32. Follow this. Look. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. So he talks about eating the bread and the wine in an unworthy manner. And what is that? It is when... Well, let's keep reading and then maybe I'll come back and explain. Keep going. 
Each one must examine himself before he eats of the bread and drinks of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body, eats and drinks judgment on himself. So to eat unworthily means to eat without recognizing the body. What does it mean to recognize the body? What does it mean to recognize the body? To not recognize the body. What body is he speaking about? He's speaking about the body of Christ. There's the body of Christ. The body of Christ is not like any other body on earth, any other organization, any other group. Understand that the word organ means a living part. It's a part. An organization is living or dead. If you look at the book of Numbers chapter 9, it tells you about a dead body. Now, what is different from Christianity and every other kind of religion? Christianity is the only living body. It's a living body. It's the body of Christ. That's why Jesus rose from the dead. That's why Buddha did not rise from the dead. If you don't recognize that the Lord Jesus, his body, the church, 1 Corinthians 12, is different from all other bodies, what do you do? You behave how you behaved when you were connected to dead bodies too. You come in and act certain ways. After all, when you are part of the Rotaract Club, the Lions Club, the social and so group, the other thing, there's a way you behave. That's how they behave in that place. And there's no consequence. When you bring that to the body of Christ, you have failed to recognize the body. When you do the rituals of this body, like they have their own rituals, in this body, this is a primary ritual. You, he said, take the bread, take the wine, eat it, drink it. You are doing it the same way they used to do certain things in the other bodies you are part of. He said, when you don't recognize this one, you pull judgment on yourself. Why? Because you're not in one of your clubs. This is not even your family meeting. This is not your village square. This is not like any other body you have ever been part of. I'm explaining by the Holy Spirit. I'm giving you understanding of scriptures. This is how people drink judgment on themselves. You come in with the old mind and operate like the old person, living life in different ways. How you used to live. If you want to understand this better, you go back and read from verse 17. He talked about how they will come together and people eat and drink without waiting for their brother and sister. Very selfish. They didn't care about each other. And he now went into explaining, be careful. This is the body of Christ. If you're not careful, there'll be consequences. I want to give you 30 seconds to say, Father, forgive me for how and I live as though, as though, I receive, I partake in spiritual things as though it doesn't matter. And it's not just about the physical bread and wine. It's about how you behave in the body of Christ. I give you 30 seconds. Father, forgive me. All the ways I have lived without regard for the body I am part of. Forgive me and help me. Purify me. Slandering. They used to slander there. You brought slander here too. You talk about people carelessly. You, you don't care to confirm if something is true. You just open your mouth. Uh, you, you don't take nonsense. You want to fight, you fight. You do anyhow. You don't know where you are. You unleash judgment. Those things you're saying against those people, the consequences that come on them, people start despising them. It may happen to you. And you're wondering, God, why? Oh, have you considered what you have been doing? Father, I ask for mercy. Father, I ask for forgiveness in the name of Jesus. Father, right where everyone is now, I'm asking for healing as rain for everything and every malady and every affliction that has been released against people in this house, wherever they are right now, whatever part of the world, let there be a release, I pray, of healing grace restoration, wholeness, soundness, a perfecting, all the 
The scriptures say that because of this, many of you are weak and sick and dying, dead. People die because of these things. People fail to get healed because of these things. People are weak physically and spiritually because of these things. Because they don't recognize who they are, where they are, what they are part of. Father, I'm asking today for mercy as you partake in the bread and the wine, the body and the blood. I ask for forgiveness. You said elders of the church should ask for healing and they would be healed. I ask for healing. I stand in the authority you've given me. I ask for healing all around. Of every kind of thing, afflictions unleashed due to this error, especially of slander today. Show mercy and help us resolve these matters. Help us handle matters the right way. Thank you, Lord God. Amen. Take the bread, take the wine.